Hi, I'm sure all of you have learned the Nikulam Sutra part 1 and part 2. So now tell me what is 61 times 57? Well, difficult, right? Because in part 1 we have learned how to multiply numbers which are closer to 10. But 61 and 57 are no way close to 10, right? And the part 2 talks about multiplication of numbers that are closer to 100 or 1000 or 10,000 for that matter. But then again, 61 and 57 are not so close to 100. So application of Nikhlam Sutra may not work here, right? 61 into 57. So does it really fail? Well, no, not really. Let me explain you the workaround. Now what happens here? Part 1, part 2 of the Nikhlam Sutra does not apply. What do we do? Now think about this. Usually we consider the base to be 100, right? But if I go by 100, this is a minus 39 and this is a minus 43, too complex. Let me divide 100 by 2. What happens if you take 100 by 2? Let's assume that our working base is 50, right? We are assuming that the base is 50. So now if you compare the numbers 61 and 57 with the working base 50 and apply the same uh, fundamentals of Nikhilam Sutra, what happens? 61 is 50 plus 11, 57 is 50 plus 7, right? Now let's apply the method. What is the first step? 61 plus 7. 61 plus 7 is a 68. That's the first part of the answer usually. Now since the base is 100, remember you will have two digits here. So this is like a 6800, 0, 6800. And what comes in these two places here? We have a plus 11 and plus 7. So the product of these two numbers is 77. So we get a 77 here. So does it mean the answer is 6877? Well, no. It is not. Remember, the plus 11 and plus 7 here was in comparison to 50. The working base was considered 50. How did we get this 50? From the actual base 100, when divided by 2 gave us 50. So you need to do an additional step here. And that additional step is, whatever proportionality has been applied here, or whatever, uh, you know, multiplication or division that has been done here, you have to do it in the same proportion to the first part of the answer. So 100 was divided by 2, you divide 68 by 2. What is 68 by 2? 34. So your first part of the answer is 34 and second part of the answer is 77. So the final answer here will be 3477. I repeat, if the base were simply 100 without any division or multiplication, we would take the answer as 6877. But here the base was not 100, the base working base was 50. And that was arrived at by dividing 100 by 2. So you need to divide the first part of the answer by 2. Basically any operation that you perform here has to be applied on the first part of the answer, on the left hand side of the answer. The right hand side remains unimpacted, right? That does not change. So 3, 4, 7, 7 is the answer. But then, is this the only way to do it? No. Let's try it uh, one more time with a different working base. So I'll take the same number, 61 and 57. Let's again consider the base to be 50, the working base to be 50. But 50 can also be taken as 10 times 5. Right? 10 into 5 is 50, like 100 times 2. 100 by 2 was 50, 10 into 5 is 50. So if you start with the original base of 10, multiply that by 5, you get 50. And proceed with the same process. So this time what happens? 50 plus 11 is 61, 50 plus 7 is 57, right? So that remains the same, 11 and 7, 11 and 7 here, right? Remember the working base is still 50, like in the earlier case, right? But earlier 50 was arrived at by taking 100 by 2. Now we have arrived at 50 by taking 10 into 5. How does the answer change? Let's see. Well, not the answer, the process. How does the process change? First step, 61 plus 7, 68, or 57 plus 11 is also 68. And the second part of the answer is, as you know, 11 into 7, 77. But remember, now we have only one digit. Earlier, we had two digits since the base was 100. The original base was 100. Here, the original base is 10, so we have only one digit, 0. But then, what do we get? We get a 77. Now that's a simple way to, uh, you know, work around, right? I mean, you take 7 in the answer and that other 7 gets carried forward to the 10th place. But before you do that, remember, whatever, proportion, whatever operation was done here, the same thing has to be applied here as well. Divided by 2, divided by 2. Into 5, so this also should be into 5. And 68 into 5 is 340. We have learned this. We have learned this in our earlier videos. How to multiply a number by 5. Divide by 2 and multiply by 10, right? So 68 times 5 is 340 in a jiffy, right? Doesn't take time. So we have a 340 and 0. So 3400 basically. Plus 77 gives you the same answer. 3477. Isn't that amazing? And is it all that can be done? 
No. Let's try it in uh, a different way, right? A third method this time. Now, we are not going to look at 100 by 2 or 100 uh, or 10 into 5. Let's say 10 into 6 because if we see numbers are actually uh, closer to 60, right? They're more closer to 60 than uh, closer to 50 here, right? So 60. Now, how do you get 60? Can it be taken as 10 into 6? Yes. So this is a 60. So I am now assuming my working base to be 60. Point to be noted is that your working base need not be 50 always. You can just play with any value that you want to, right? So now I'm going to take it as 60. See how the process changes. This time, the base is 60. So 60 plus 1 gives you a 61. 60 minus 3 would give you a 57. And we have discussed about how to deal with this positive and negative numbers, right? When one is more than the base, the other is less than the base. Now what happens? 61 minus 3 or 57 plus 1. Either ways we get 58 as the first part of the answer. Second part, will it have a single digit or two digits? It will have a single digit because we are taking it as 10 times 6. So we have a single digit here. A 0 here basically. But then what we actually get by multiplying these two values here, a plus 1 and minus 3 is minus 3, right? 1 into minus 3 is minus 3. So we have a minus 3 here in this space. But before we do this operation on 580, remember this 58 is not 58. It has to be uh, operated on. Some operation has to be done here. What operation has to be done? Whatever was done here. Into 6. So do an into 6 here. 58 into 6. Now 58 into 6 is 300 and 8 into 6 is 48, right? 56, 300, 8, 6, 48, 348. So this is like a 3, 4, 8. And we have a 0 here. But then minus 3. 3480 minus 3 is 3477. Is it that answer? Yes, 3477. So this is how you can actually use your own base or choose your own working base as per your convenience and get to the answers. Now this is just one example that I've taken here. Of course, you need to practice with a few more problems and master this technique. But before I leave you, let me also take a three digit multiplication. Let's try something. Uh, maybe uh, let's say let's say something like uh, a 257 257 uh, 241 yeah 257 241 now I'm sure all of you have got the idea right these numbers are closer to 250 yes 250 plus 7 and uh, 250 minus 9 but how do we get 250 as a working base can you take it as 1000 by 4 yes a thousand by 4 is 250 so my original base is 1000, working base is 250. What happens? The first step, as always, either you take 240, uh, 257 minus 9 or 241 plus 7. You get a 248. There are two more ways to get to this value. We have discussed that in part 1. You can just use whichever is convenient to you. So 248. How many zeros do we have? Three zeros because our base is 1000, right? The original base is 1000. So we have three zeros here. Don't forget that. And what do we get here? Plus 7. Uh, minus 9. Plus 7 and minus 9 is uh, a minus 63. Yeah. So we need to subtract that 63 from this last 1000. So basically, if this operation was not needed, our answer would have been 2,48,000 minus 63, which is 2,47,937. But then there's an additional step involved here. What is that? You need to perform this operation on the left hand side of the answer. What did we do here? By 4. So do the same thing here by 4. No, I, am, I would say I'm lucky that I got a number 248, which is directly divisible by 4, right? So we get a 62 here, right? So 248,000 becomes a 62,000. But it may not always uh, be an integral value, right? Sometimes you may get a decimal value. Like if in, in case of, instead of 248, if it is 246, I would get a 61.5. So 61.5 into 1000 is 61,500. Uh, you getting it? So whatever be the number, just divide by 2, you may or may not get an integer value. In this case, we have got an integer value. 248 by 4 is 62. So we actually have a 62 with three zeros, 62,000. But then I need to also take care of this minus 63 here. So 62,000 minus 63. What should be the answer? 61,937, right? 61,937. So 251 into 241 should be 61,937. And I'm sure if you practice a few more problems, uh, using this technique, you will you'll arrive at it much faster. So this is how Nikhilam Sutra can be used uh, with a base that is convenient for you to work with and then follow the same process to arrive at the answer. Just remember, on the left hand side of the answer here, everywhere, we need to perform the same operation in the same proportionality 
that you had done on the original base, right? A by two or into five, into six or a by four, whatever uh, that that multiplication or division be, right? So that's how Nikhilam Sutra from ancient Indian mathematics comes handy when you got to do multiplications. A powerful technique and I'm sure you'll make the most of it. So I'll meet you again in my next video with another interesting technique from Vedic maths. Until then, keep practicing and do take very good care of yourselves. Bye.